Desert Wanderings. Introduction to Desert Wanderings, The Book of Numbers, Dramatic Narrative, and Central Theme. The Book of Numbers, or Bamidbar in Hebrew, stands in stark contrast to the Song of Songs, while the latter depicts an idyllic and intimate love affair, number, Numbers presents a more turbulent relationship between God and the people of Israel. This narrative dynamic extends to the broader relationship between God and the human soul, illustrating the complexities and challenges inherent in faith. The wilderness setting of the narrative is symbolic of both physical and spiritual journeys. It's a place of testing, dependency, and transformation where the Israelites, under God's guidance, transition from slavery to a covenant community. Central theme, trust in God. The central theme of the book of Numbers is the Israelites' struggle with trusting God. Despite witnessing extraordinary signs and wonders, their faith frequently wavers. This lack of trust is portrayed as their dominant sin, affecting their decisions and actions throughout their journey. The narrative underscores how, despite numerous miraculous interventions, manna from heaven, water from the rock, victory in battles, the Israelites often failed to internalize these experiences as reasons to trust God fully. The nature of God's relationship with Israel. Throughout Numbers, God is portrayed as a constant guiding presence leading the Israelites through the wilderness with a cloud and a fire. His involvement in their lives is direct and tangible, yet the Israelites frequently doubt and challenge this providential care. A Reflection of Human Nature The relationship dynamics in numbers reflect broader aspects of human nature, the struggle to maintain faith in the unseen, the tendency to forget past blessings, and the ease with which people can lose trust in the face of challenges. The Consequences of Distrust the narrative details various incidents where the Israelites' distrust leads to divine punishment, including plagues, fiery serpents, and the earth-swallowing rebels. These serve as stark reminders of the consequences of failing to trust in God. A Journey of Learning Trust Despite these challenges, Numbers also illustrates a journey towards understanding and trusting in divine providence. The eventual entry into the promised land is a testament to God's faithfulness and the eventual maturing of the Israelites' faith. Conclusion, Lessons from the Wilderness The story of the Israelites in the wilderness, with its focus on trust, Speaks to contemporary believers as well. It encourages a deeper understanding of faith, especially in the face of uncertainties and challenges. The Book of Numbers acts as a mirror, reflecting the spiritual journey of every believer. It highlights the importance of trust in God, not just as a concept, but as an active, living part of one's faith journey. Starting for Canaan from Sinai, Census and Encampment. Transitioning to Canaan. As the Israelites prepare to move from Sinai to Canaan, a detailed organization of the tribes is undertaken. This process, outlined in Numbers chapters 1 to 2, signifies the transition from a nomadic existence to a more structured community ready to enter and settle in the promised land. Organizational structure of the tribes. The census serves as more than a mere headcount. It is a means of organizing the Israelites into a cohesive unit. Each tribe with its designated leader is counted, excluding the tribe of Levi, 
reflecting a systematic approach to managing the large community. Strategic encampment. The arrangement of the tribes around the Pernacle is not arbitrary. Each tribe is assigned a specific location relative to the tabernacle, symbolizing their unique role and relationship to the sacred space and to each other. Special role of the Levites. The tribe of Levi is set apart for a special purpose. Their primary responsibility is the care, maintenance, and transportation of the tabernacle, underscoring their integral role in the religious life of the community. Priestly functions. The Levites' duties extend beyond physical upkeep. They are deeply involved in the spiritual and liturgical aspects of worship, acting as intermediaries between the people and God. The tabernacle, a symbol of God's presence. The placement of the tabernacle at the center of the encampment emphasizes its significance as the spiritual heart of the Israelite community. It is a constant, visible reminder of God's presence among His people. Catechism number 1183 highlights the reverence due to the tabernacle, indicative of its role in worship. This reverence in the wilderness journey prefigures the respect and honor given to places of worship in later Jewish and Christian traditions. The Tabernacle as a Focal Point The organization of the camp around the Tabernacle ensures that all daily activities, whether mundane or spiritual, are oriented towards this holy space. It is a physical representation of God being at the center of Israelite life. Conclusion, Readying for Canaan The meticulous organization of the Israelites as they prepare to journey from Sinai to Canaan symbolizes the transition from a period of formation to one of fulfillment of God's promises. Lessons in Community and Worship This section of Numbers teaches valuable lessons about community organization, the sanctity of worship spaces, and the central place of God in communal and individual life. The journey's symbolism, 40 stages. Allegorical and spiritual journey. The 42 stages of Israel's journey, as listed in Numbers 33, symbolize not just a physical journey, but also a spiritual pilgrimage. This period is marked by the Israelites bearing their iniquities and experiencing God's displeasure, yet also moving forward as God's chosen people. Christian commentary interprets this journey as an allegory for the soul's progression towards virtue and union with God, paralleling the Christian believer's spiritual journey. Symbolism of Israel's 40-stage journey Beyond the physical roof, the book of Numbers presents the journey of the Israelites through the wilderness in 42 distinct stages. This journey, while historical and geographic, also encapsulates profound spiritual and allegorical dimensions. Allegorical significance of the 42 stages. A metaphor for a spiritual growth. The stages of the journey, as chronicled in Numbers 33, serve as metaphors for the stages of spiritual growth and moral development. Each stage represents a step in the Israelites' journey towards becoming a nation under God. Iniquities and Divine Displeasure The journey is marked by instances where the Israelites face the consequences of their sins and encounter God's displeasure. These moments are pivotal, serving as lessons 
and opportunities for repentance and spiritual growth. A progression towards God's promise. Despite the challenges and setbacks, the journey represents a continuous movement towards fulfilling God's promise. It symbolizes the transformation of the Israelites from a slave people in Egypt to a nation with a divine mission. Christian Interpretation of the Journey In Christian theology, the journey of the Israelites is often seen as an allegory for the spiritual journey of the believer. It represents the soul's progression from sin and separation from God towards redemption and union with the divine. Path of Virtue and Holiness The challenges and trials faced by the Israelites are interpreted as analogous to the trials faced by Christians on their path of virtue and holiness. Each stage of the journey can be seen as a step in the process of sanctification and deepening one's relationship with God. Early Christian theologian Origen, in his homilies, particularly interprets the stages of the Israelites' journey as symbolic of the stages in the soul's ascent to God. He emphasizes that just as the Israelites moved towards the promised land, so does the soul move towards its ultimate union with God. Conclusion A Journey with Multiple Layers of Meaning The 42 stages of Israel's journey from Egypt to the Promised Land present a rich tapestry of lessons about faith, obedience, repentance, and divine guidance. These lessons are applicable not only in the historical context of Israel, but also in the spiritual lives of believers today. Universal Themes of Spiritual Growth the journey, with its allegorical and spiritual dimensions, touches on universal themes of spiritual growth, the human propensity to sin, the need for divine grace, and the ultimate journey of the soul towards its promised land, a life in union with God. Priestly duties and dedication, the ironic blessing, intermediaries between God and people. In the Old Testament, particularly in the Book of Numbers, priests played a crucial role as intermediaries between God and the Israelites. They performed various relig religious rituals, offered sacrifices, and blessed the people. The Ironic Blessing the ironic blessing articulated in Numbers chapter 6 verses 24 to 26 is a profound prayer of blessing that Aaron and his descendants were to pronounce over the Israelites. It is one of the oldest and most revered blessings in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Components of the blessing The blessing comprises three parts each invoking God's favor in a different way. The Lord bless you and keep you. A request for God's protection and care. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. A plea for God's gracious and favorable presence. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. A prayer for God's direct attention and the gift of peace. The blessings association with God as El Shaddai, the All-Sufficient One, underscores God's ability to provide, protect, and graze His people with peace. Transition to the New Covenant, Priesthood of Believers. In the New Covenant, as expounded in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the concept of priesthood expands beyond the descendants of Aaron. It introduces the idea of a royal priesthood encompassing all believers, indicating that every Christian shares in a spiritual priesthood through baptism. Democratic Spirituality 
This shift marks a transition from the exclusive priestly lineage of the Old Testament to a more democratic spirituality in the New Testament where each believer has direct access to God and is called to live out a priestly role in the spiritual community. Distinct from ministerial priesthood. It's important to distinguish this general priesthood of all believers from the ministerial priesthood. The latter refers to those who have received holy orders and the Christian tradition holding specific roles and responsibilities within the church's sacramental and liturgical life. Conclusion The Enduring Power of the Ironic Blessing The Ironic Blessing continues to hold a significant place in both Jewish and Christian liturgies. It encapsulates a timeless appeal for God's protection, grace, and peace upon His people. Symbol of God's Enduring Care This blessings, transcending time and covenantal changes, remains a powerful testament to God's enduring care and grace towards humanity. Role of the Levites and the Concept of Offerings Special Dedication the Levites hold a unique position in the Israelite community. Set apart for sacred duties, their role is central to the religious life and worship practices of the Israelites, especially in the context of the tabernacle. The Levitical Service the Levites were entrusted with the care and maintenance of the tabernacle, a responsibility that included transporting it during the Israelites' wanderings. Their duties encompassed both the practical aspects of managing the sacred space and performing religious rites. Intermediaries in worship. As part of their service, the Levites acted as intermediaries between the people and God. They were responsible for facilitating the various aspects of worship, including the handling and presentation of offerings to God. The concept and role of offerings. Expression of devotion and allegiance. Offerings in the ancient Israelite context were more than ritualistic practices. They were expressions of devotion, thanksgiving, and allegiance to God's covenant. They symbolized the community's recognition of God's sovereignty and their dependence on His grace. Tribal Leaders' Participation The act of each tribal leader bringing offerings over a 12-day period following the consecration of the altar was deeply symbolic. It represented each tribe's commitment to the covenant and acknowledgement of God as their divine leader and provider. The variety of offerings. The offerings varied in nature and purpose. They included burnt offerings, peace offerings, sin offerings, and thanksgiving offerings, each with its own specific significance and procedure as outlined in Levitical law. A means of atonement and celebration. Some offerings were meant for atonement of sins, while others were expressions of gratitude and celebration. These variety allow the community to interact with God in different contexts, reflecting the multifaceted nature of their relationship with Him. Levites, facilitators of the covenant relationship. The Levites' role went beyond mere ritualistic functions. They facilitated the covenant relationship between God and His people. Through their service, the Levites helped maintain the spiritual health and holiness of the community. Educators and Guides Part of the Levitical duty was also to educate and guide the Israelites in matters of the law and worship. They played a crucial role in ensuring that the worship practices aligned with the divine commandments and intentions. Conclusion, the integral role of Levites and offerings. Sustaining the worship life of Israel. The Levites and the system of offerings were integral 
to sustaining the worship life of the Israelite community. They ensured that the practices of worship and sacrifice were carried out in accordance with God's instructions, thereby maintaining the sanctity and order of the community's religious life. Reflections of a Deeper Spiritual Reality The Levitical service and the offerings are reflections of a deeper spiritual reality, the need for atonement, thanksgiving, and continuous acknowledgement of God's Lordship. They represent the tangible expressions of an intangible faith central to the Israelite identity and their relationship with God. Observance of Passover and Departure Protocols Introduction, the Significance of Passover in the Wilderness The celebration of Passover by the Israelites in the wilderness, particularly in the second year after the Exodus, was a ritual deep significance. It commemorated the deliverance from Egyptian bondage and symbolized God's saving grace. Observance of Passover Inclusive provisions for the unclean In the second year of their journey, the Passover observance included specific provisions for those who were ritually unclean due to contact with the corpse. This inclusivity ensured that all members of the community could partake in this important commemoration irrespective of their ritual purity at the time. Alternative observance For those who were unclean or away on a journey during the regular Passover, a second chance was given in the following month to observe the feast, ensuring that everyone had the opportunity to remember and celebrate God's deliverance. Guidelines for Observance and Consequences Numbers chapters 9 to 10 provides detailed instructions for the observance of Passover. This included regulations on how the Passover lamb was to be prepared and eaten and the prohibition against leaven during the festival period. Punishments for non-compliance The text outlines strict consequences for those who fail to observe the Passover without a valid reason. These underscore the seriousness with which this commemoration was to be treated, reflecting its foundational role in the Israelite identity and faith. Guidance by the Cloud and Fire Manifestations of Divine Presence the presence of the cloud by day and fire by night over the tabernacle was a vivid reminder of God's continual presence with his people. This phenomenon was not just symbolic, but a tangible manifestation of divine guidance. Determinants of Movement The Israelites' journey through the wilderness was directly guided by the movement of the cloud and fire. They broke calm and moved only when the cloud lifted and they camped when it settled. This ensured that their travels were in sync with God's timing and direction. Divine Navigation System The cloud and fire served as a divine navigation system, indicating when and where to move. This reliance on divine signals fostered a deep dependence on God's guidance and a constant awareness of His proximity. Conclusion, the integrative role of Passover and divine guidance, more than rituals and signs. The observance of Passover and the guidance by the cloud and fire were more than mere rituals and supernatural signs. They were integral to the spiritual life of the Israelites, reinforcing their identity as God's chosen people and their reliance on His providence and guidance. A journey marked by faith and obedience. These practices illustrate a journey marked by faith, obedience, and a deep sense of the sacred. The Passover reminded them of God's past acts of salvation, while the cloud and fire were a constant affirmation of His presence and guidance in their current journey. The craving for luxuries and God's response. Context of Discontent 
During their journey through the wilderness, the Israelites experienced a period of longing for the past, particularly the comforts and luxuries of Egypt. This sentiment was not just about physical cravings, but reflected a deeper struggle with contentment and trust in God's plan. The craving for Egyptian luxuries, psychological challenge. The Israelites' longing for the foods and comforts of Egypt symbolized a psychological challenge. Despite the hardships of their past, they romanticized their life in Egypt, indicating a lack of faith in God's promises for a better future. Struggle to embrace the wilderness. The wilderness represented not only a physical but also a spiritual journey. The Israelites' cravings highlighted their difficulty in adapting to this new way of life which required a complete reliance on God's provision. God's anger and the role of Moses. Divine frustration. God's response to the Israelites' complaints and cravings was one of anger. This reaction was not merely against their physical cravings, but their continual lack of faith and trust in his provision and promises. Moses intercessed sorry role. In the face of potential severe punishment from God, Moses interceded for the people. His role as a mediator was crucial. He stood between the wrath of God and the shortcomings of the people, highlighting the central role of intercession in leadership. Lessons from the cravings. The Israelites' yearning for Egypt serves as a lesson in trust and faith. It teaches that nostalgia for a known past, however difficult, can often hinder the journey towards a promising but unknown future. Testing and strengthening faith. This period of craving and complaint was also a test and strengthening of the Israelites' faith. It was an opportunity for them to learn to depend wholly on God for both physical sustenance and spiritual fulfillment, human nature, and divine response. The incident of craving in the wilderness offers insights into human nature's complexities of God's providential care. It underscores the human tendency to resist change and long for familiar comforts even in the face of divine guidance. Moses' role as a leader. Moses' intervention underscores the importance of strong, compassionate leadership that can intercede and guide people through periods of doubt and struggle. A journey of transformation. Ultimately, this episode in the wilderness journey highlights the transformative process the Israelites were undergoing from a people bound by their past to a community learning to live in reliance on God's promises and provision. Material on provision of kale. Context of rebellion. In the wilderness, the Israelites' constant complaints and lack of faith led to a pivotal moment where their demands for meat were met by God with a provision of quail. This event is emblematic of the complex relationship between divine provision and human desire. God's response to the Israelites' demands. Provision amidst rebellion. Despite their rebellious spirit and ingratitude, God responded to the Israelites' demands by sending an abundance of quail. This act of provision, while meeting their immediate desires, was also a response to their deeper spiritual rebellion. A mixed blessing. The abundance of quail, while seemingly a generous provision, came with inherent lessons about greed and the consequences of insisting on one's desires against divine wisdom. It was a manifestation of God's patience, yet also a warning against the dangers of discontent and lack of faith. 
The lesson from the quail incident. Punishment through fulfillment of desires. As Wisdom chapter 11 verses 15 to 16 suggest, the punishment for sin often arises from the very object of one's sinful desires. The quail episode thought the Israelites that getting what they wanted could lead to negative consequences when it stemmed from a place of disobedience and mistrust. Adolescent stage of spiritual development. This episode reflects the Israelites' adolescent stage in their spiritual journey. Much like adolescents who make impulsive and foolish choices without fully understanding the consequences, the Israelites grappled with their newfound freedom and responsibility. Deeper Spiritual Implications Understanding God's Purposes The incident encourages a deeper understanding of God's purposes in providing for and disciplining His people. It was not just about satisfying physical hunger, but teaching important spiritual lessons about reliance, obedience, and the consequences of human actions. Developing Spiritual Maturity This event was part of the Israelites' journey towards spiritual maturity. Through such experiences, they were meant to learn about the importance of trust in God, the dangers of giving in to base desires, and the necessity of aligning their will with God's. Conclusion, the Paradox of Divine Provision The provision of quail by God serves as a paradoxical example of how divine provision can also be a teaching tool. It provided for the Israelites' physical needs while simultaneously offering a profound lesson in spiritual and moral trust. A journey towards deeper faith. This incident is a crucial part of the narrative that illustrates the Israelites' journey towards a deeper faith and understanding of God. It highlights the complexities of God's interactions with His people, where his responses serve multiple purposes, including provision, instruction, and correction. Appointment to authority and sibling rivalry. Context of leadership stream. The journey through the wilderness presented not only physical challenges for the Israelites, but also leadership and relational challenges, particularly for Moses. The incident involving Moses, his siblings, and the appointment of 70 elders highlights these complexities. Moses' overwhelming leadership room. Moses, faced with the daunting task of leading a grumbling and often rebellious people, reach a point of profound frustration. His plea to God reflected the immense psychological and spiritual burden he carried. Appointment of 70 Elders To alleviate Moses' burden, God instructed him to select 70 elders from among the people. These elders were then endowed with a portion of Moses' spirit, granting them the ability to share in the leadership and prophetic responsibilities. This act not only lightened Moses' load, but also decentralized authority, promoting a more distributed leadership model. The issue of sibling rivalry. Jealousy among siblings. Miriam and Aaron, Moses' siblings, displayed jealousy over the unique authority and relationship Moses had with God. This familial tension underlines the human aspect of biblical narratives where even the closest of relationships are tested. God's Affirmation of Moses In response to this jealousy, God intervened to affirm Moses' special position as the leader he had chosen. Unlike other prophets, Moses had the privilege of speaking with God face to face, highlighting his unique role in God's plan. Lessons from the Incident The episode teaches about the different roles and responsibilities in a community. 
Moses, Miriam, and Aaron each have their unique contributions to make, and understanding and respecting these differences were crucial. Divine Selection and Human Response The situation also reflects on how divine selection can cause human envy and strife. Yet God's choices are purposeful and for the greater good of His people. Moses' Leadership Model Moses' model of leadership, bearing responsibility, expressing vulnerability, and sharing authority over his valuable lessons in humility, delegation, and resilience. Complexity of Leading God's People The narrative around Moses and his siblings, along with the appointment of the 70 elders, provides insights into the complexities of leading God's people balancing authority with humility, and managing interpersonal relationships. A mirror to human nature. The events reflect human nature and its struggles with jealousy, rivalry, and the acceptance of divinely ordained leadership. They also underscore the importance of trusting in God's wisdom and plan, even in the face of familial or communal tensions. Moses as a Paradigm Moses emerges as a paradigmatic figure in biblical leadership, exemplifying qualities like humility, patience, and reliance on God amidst challenges, both from within his family and the broader community. Miriam's Punishment Context of the Punishment Miriam's challenge to Moses' unique leadership role as ordained by God both for a severe response from God. This incident highlights the gravity with which God viewed challenges to his established order. The Nature of Miriam's Challenge Miriam's actions influenced by jealousy and perhaps a sense of underappreciation led her to question the singular authority and relationship Moses had with God. This rebellion was not just against Moses, but indirectly against God's divine order. The consequence, leprosy. Immediate divine judgment. Miriam's punishment came swiftly. She was stricken with leprosy. In the biblical context, leprosy was often seen as a physical manifestation of spiritual rebellion or moral failing. Outside the camp, Miriam's affliction required her to be outside the camp for a period. This separation symbolized not just physical uncleanliness, but also a spiritual and communal breach. The significance of leprosy. The affliction of leprosy in biblical narratives often carries deeper symbolic meanings. It can represent sin, rebellion, or a state of being that is contrary to God's holiness. Restoration and Healing Miriam's eventual healing and return to the community signify God's mercy and the possibility of restoration following repentance and correction. Broader Implications Miriam's punishment serves as a warning against disunity and rebellion within a faith community, especially against established divine leadership. Role of Women and Leadership The incident also opens discussions on the roles of women in biblical narratives, their influence, and the consequences of their actions within the leadership dynamic. Conclusion, Lessons from Miriam's Experience Understanding God's Sovereignty The episode underscores the need to understand and respect God's sovereignty in choosing leaders. It teaches that rebellion against God's order can have severe consequences. Balancing Authority and Humility Miriam's story is a lesson in balancing respect for authority with expression of one's own role and gifts within a community. Grace and Redemption 
Despite the severity of the punishment, Miriam's story is also one of grace and redemption, reminding believers that while God is just, He is also merciful, offering restoration upon repentance. Spying the Promised Land Strategic Reconnaissance The exploration of Canaan in Numbers 13 was a strategic move to assess the land God promised to the Israelites. This mission marked a significant turning point in their journey, filled with both hope and trepidation. The Mission to Explore Canaan Moses sent spies, one from each tribe, to explore the land of Canaan. This action was not just a military recognizance, but also a fact-finding mission to prepare the Israelites for their future home. Kadesh Barnea as symbolic threshold. The term Kadesh Barnea plays a symbolic role in this narrative. It represents a place of decision and separation where the Israelites confronted the reality of their divine promise versus the challenges that lay ahead. The spies report and its impact. The spies reported that Canaan was indeed a land flowing with milk and honey, confirming God's promise of a rich and fertile land. The presence of giants. Despite the positive aspects of the land, the majority of the spies focused on the formidable challenges, particularly the presence of giants, which instilled fear and doubt among the Israelites. Caleb's contrasting faith. In contrast to the majority, Caleb demonstrated remarkable faith and confidence. He urged the Israelites to take immediate action to possess the land, trusting in God's promise and support. The response of the Israelite community. The daunting report of the spies led to the widespread fear and despair among the Israelites, overshadowing the positive aspects of the promised land. Lack of trust in God. This episode highlights a recurring theme in the Israelites' wilderness journey, a lack of trust in God's promises and power. The fear induced by the report overshadowed their faith in God, who had already shown his capability through various miracles. Lessons from the Spying Mission The story of the spies in Canaan serves as a powerful illustration of the struggle between faith and fear. It underscores the importance of trusting in God's promises, even in the face of daunting challenges. The Role of Leadership and Perspective Caleb's response exemplifies the role of leadership in guiding people's perspectives. His faith and perspective provide a stark contrast to the fear and negativity of the other spies. Conclusion, a defining moment in Israel's history. The spying of the promised land was a crucial test of faith for the Israelites. It was a moment that defined their readiness to step into the promises God had for them. This episode in the Israelites' journey serves as a timeless lesson on navigating fear, uncertainty, and the importance of trust and faith in divine promises. It teaches the value of focusing on God's assurances rather than being overwhelmed by apparent obstacles. God's Response to the Rebellion Context of Rebellion in the wake of the discouraging report from the spies, the Israelites rebelled against God's plan, expressing their desire to return to Egypt. This marked a significant breach in their relationship with God. The Flare of Divine Anger God's response to this rebellion was one of intense anger. The Israelites' lack of faith despite witnessing numerous miracles, provoked God's wrath, illustrating the severity with which God views unbelief and distrust. 
Moses' role as mediator. At this critical moment, Moses intervened, pleading with God on behalf of the Israelites. His intercession showcases his role as a mediator and highlights the depth of his commitment to his people. Pleading for Mercy Moses appealed to God's mercy, reputation, and the promises made to the patriarchs. His argument reflects a deep understanding of God's nature and his covenantal commitment to Israel. Consequences for Rebellion Denied entry to the Promised Land As a result of their rebellion, God declared that none of the adults who had left Egypt except Caleb and Joshua would enter the Promised Land. This banishment underscored the seriousness of their distrust and ingratitude. The spies who brought back the negative report excluding Caleb and Joshua were struck down with a plague. This served as a direct consequence of their role in inciting fear and rebellion among the people. Lessons from the Divine Response this episode teaches about the importance of trust and obedience in one's relationship with God. It highlights the consequences of this belief and the significance of faithfulness. God's Justice and Mercy While God's justice was evident in the punishment, His mercy was also displayed through Moses' successful intercession which prevented immediate destruction. Conclusion, a turning point in Israel's journey. The rebellion and its aftermath were a critical turning point in the journey of the Israelites. It tested their faith, allegiance to God, and willingness to trust His promises. Moses' leadership and advocacy. The incident underscores Moses' indispensable role as a leader and advocate for the Israelites, balancing God's wrath with His mercy and promises. Penitential Discipline and Sabbath Observance Context of Discipline In their wilderness journey, the Israelites faced the need for penitential discipline. This was crucial for preparing them spiritually to enter and live in the Promised Land. Laws for Penitential Acts Sacrifices and Offerings the narrative in the book of Numbers details various sacrifices and offerings that the Israelites were to make upon entering the Promised Land. These acts served as a means of atonement and a symbol of their penitence and devotion to God. Significance of Penitential Rites These rites underscore the importance of acknowledging sin, seeking forgiveness, and restoring the relationship with God. They were essential in maintaining the holiness and purity required by God. Observance and Enforcement of Sabbath Laws The incident of the human gathering sticks on the Sabbath and its subsequent punishment underlines the strict observance of the Sabbath that was expected of the Israelites. This event illustrates the seriousness with which Sabbath laws were enforced. Teaching on obedience. The punishment of the Sabbath violator was a stark reminder to the Israelites of the importance of obedience to God's commandments. It served as a lesson to the community on the sanctity of the Sabbath and the need for adherence to God's laws. The commandment of tzitzit. God's command to wear tzitzit on their garments was a physical reminder to the Israelites of their obligations under the covenant. The inclusion of a blue thread was a visual cue to remember and obey God's commandments. Later Biblical References In later scriptural narratives, the tzitzit becomes a symbol of faith and healing. For instance, the woman with the issue of blood in the Gospels is healed by touching the fringe of Jesus' garment, signifying her faith in Jesus' divine authority. Conclusion Discipline and Remembrance in Wilderness 
The penitential discipline and the observance of the Sabbath were integral to the Israelites' daily life in the wilderness. They were constant reminders of their covenant with God and the need for obedience. A journey of spiritual formation. These practices were part of the Israelites' spiritual formation as they prepared to enter the Promised Land. They served as training in righteousness and a continual reminder of their unique relationship with God. Kura's Rebellion Kura, along with certain followers, rose in rebellion against Moses and Aaron. This revolt was not merely a political dispute, but a fundamental challenge to the divinely appointed leadership of Israel. The Heart of the Conflict Kura and his allies feeling marginalized or seeking greater power, questioned why Moses and Aaron held such exclusive authority. Their challenge reflected a deeper issue of discontent and ambition within the community. The rebellion was more than a challenge to Moses and Aaron. It was a challenge to God's chosen structure for his people. Kura's actions implied that God's decisions regarding leadership were either unfair or mistaken. Moses responds in the divine test. In response, Moses proposed a test involving censors or incense burners to let God himself show whom he had chosen for the priesthood. The use of censors in this test was symbolic, representing the role of the priesthood in mediating between God and the people through offerings and prayers. The moment of divine judgment. Separation of the congregation. God's instruction for the people to distance themselves from the rebels underscored the seriousness of the situation. The separation was a physical and symbolic act Distinguishing between those who were faithful to God's order and those who opposed it. The earth opens. The dramatic event of the earth swallowing Kura and his followers was a stark manifestation of divine judgment. It was a tangible demonstration of God's disapproval of the rebellion and his support for Moses and Aaron. Theological Implications of the Rebellion the outcome of the rebellion served to reaffirm God's established order and the roles of Moses and Aaron. It was a clear message that God's choices and commands were not to be taken lightly or challenged impudently. A warning against dissension. Kura's faith became a warning against dissension and uprising within the community. It highlighted the importance of unity, obedience, and respect for God-given authority. Conclusion Lessons from Kura's Rebellion The story of Kura's Rebellion teaches the importance of trusting in God's decisions, even when they may not align with personal desires or ambitions. Dangers of pride and ambition Kura's downfall serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of pride, ambition, and challenging divine authority. It reminds believers of the need for humility and submission to God's will. Aaron's Rod, a sign of chosen leadership. Following Kara's rebellion, there was a need for a clear divine affirmation of Aaron's priesthood to quell any lingering doubts and solidify his leadership role. The Test of the Stops Each of Israel's tribes, including Levi, provided a staff as a symbol of their claim to the priesthood. This act was a visible representation of each tribe's aspiration of claim to the sacred room. Placement in the Tabernacle The staffs were placed in the Tabernacle, a sacred space symbolizing God's presence and authority, underscoring the seriousness and sanctity of the test. The Miracle of Aaron's Staff 
apron staff not only sprouted, but produced blossoms and almonds overnight. This was a miraculous event, defying natural processes and served as undeniable proof of divine selection. Symbolism of life and fruitfulness. The blossoming of the staff, particularly in a place where no natural frost could occur, symbolized life, divine blessing, and fruitfulness. It was a metaphor for Aaron's role in bringing a spiritual life and nourishment to the people. Divine affirmation of Aaron's role. The miracle unequivocally confirmed Aaron's role as the chosen high priest. It served as a direct communication from God, leaving no room for doubt or debate among the Israelites. This event resolved any lingering leadership disputes following the rebellion of Korah. It reaffirmed the established priestly line and served as a reminder of God's sovereignty in choosing leaders. Theological significance of the event. God's authority and leadership selection. Aaron's rod blossoming was a testament to God's ultimate authority in selecting and affirming leaders. It highlighted that through leadership and the community of faith comes from divine appointment, not human ambition. A symbol of priestly legitimacy. The event set a precedent in Israelite history and tradition about the legitimacy of priesthood. Aaron's rod became a symbol of authentic priestly authority. Conclusion Aaron's rod as a testament to divine will. The preservation of Aaron's blossoming rod, later kept in the Ark of the Covenant, served as a lasting reminder of this miraculous event and God's power in choosing his representatives. Lessons for Future Generations The story of Aaron's rod is a powerful lesson in the recognition and respect of divinely appointed leadership emphasizing faith in God's choices and the importance of unity under God-ordained leadership. Earthquake swallows the rebels. Grave consequences. The rebellion led by Korah against Moses and Aaron prompted a dramatic and severe response from God. This event stands as a stark warning against the dangers of challenging divinely appointed authority. The moment of judgment. The earth opening up to swallow Kura and his followers was a sudden and terrifying event. This natural phenomenon was used by God as an instrument of divine judgment. Symbolism of the earthquake. The act of the earth swallowing the rebels symbolized the finality and irrevocability of God's judgment. It was a physical manifestation of divine displeasure and served to instill fear and respect for God's authority among the Israelites. The fate of Korah and his followers. Immediate and total judgment. The rebels were consumed immediately, leaving no chance for repentance or escape. This underscored the severity of their sin, the direct challenge to God's chosen leadership. Descend into Sheol. The text suggests that the rebel went alive into Sheol, the realm of the dead. This descent symbolizes not just physical death, but a spiritual fall from God's grace. Implications for the Israelite community. The incident served as a powerful warning to the rest of the Israelite community about the consequences of rebellion and disobedience. Restoration of order. Following this dramatic event, the community's order was restored and the challenge to Moses and Aaron's leadership was decisively ended. Theological Reflections The episode highlights God's sovereignty and justice. It demonstrates that divine authority is not to be taken lightly and there are grave consequences for attempting to usurp it. The use of a natural event like an earthquake to enact judgment shows that all creation is under God's command and can be, can, can be used to fulfill His purposes. Conclusion, Lessons from the Earthquake 
The story of the earthquake swallowing the rebels teaches the importance of respecting divine order and leadership. It is a reminder that rebellion against God's will can lead to dire consequences. The power of God's judgment. The event is a testament to the power and immediacy of God's judgment, serving as a cautionary tale for all might consider challenging God's appointed leaders. Conclusion The Principle of Obedience Obedience as a core theme. The Book of Numbers intricately weaves the theme of obedience into its narrative. It becomes evident that obedience to God is not just a duty, but the central tenet of Israel's relationship with Him. Obedience over sacrifice, prioritizing divine commands. The Israelites' experiences in the wilderness teach that God values obedience to His commands more than ritual sacrifices. This is a clear message that the heart's intention and compliance with God's will are more significant than ceremonial observances. Biblical Examples Various incidents, such as the rebellion of Korah and the sin of Moses in striking the rock, underscore that even well-intentioned actions, if not in line with God's command, can lead to severe consequences. Faith and trust as foundations of obedience. Through obedience stems from unwavering faith and trust in God. The Israelites' journey illustrates that obedience without faith is incomplete. Challenges to obedience. The journey through the wilderness presented numerous challenges that tested the Israelites' faith and obedience. Their responses to these trials revealed the fluctuating nature of human faithfulness. Following God's will, a timeless lesson. The principle of obedience and trust in God is demonstrated in numbers, transcends its historical context. It remains a vital lesson for all believers, emphasizing the importance of aligning one's actions and decisions with God's will. Modern application. In contemporary times, the call to obedience challenges believers to trust in God's plan, even when they seem difficult or counterintuitive. Conclusion. Embracing obedience in faith. Obedience as an act of worship. Obedience to God is an act of worship that acknowledges His sovereignty and love. It is a conscious choice to follow His path, made possible by faith. Encouragement to Believers The Book of Numbers encourages believers to cultivate a deep, trusting relationship with God. It invites them to reflect on their obedience and faith, understanding that these are vital to a fulfilling spiritual journey. The experiences of the Israelites in the wilderness leave a legacy for all who seek to follow God. A reminder that obedience, rooted in faith and trust, is key to experiencing God's guidance and blessings. Thank you for joining us in today's episode on Desert Wanderings, the Book of Numbers. We delve into the dramatic narrative and central themes exploring the Israelite struggle with trust in God their physical and spiritual journey through the wilderness, and the nature of God's relationship with His people. The story of Numbers serves as a mirror reflecting the spiritual journey of every believer, emphasizing the importance of trust and obedience in our faith journey. If you found this discussion insightful, please like, share, and subscribe on our channel for more deep dives into biblical narrative. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will explore Moses, his role, act, and legacy. We'll delve into the significant contribution, his leadership, and the lessons we can learn from his journey. Thank you for watching, and may you continue to find inspiration in your faith journey.